Loading data using fetch. We'll discuss using fetch to request data, asynchronous control flow, promises, and ES6 async and await. We've got this data set published in a GitHub gist. I'd like to make a program that loads in this data, parses it, and displays it somehow. I'm going to start by forking hello HTML, our bare minimum HTML page. I'll change the title to loading and parsing CSV data, and I'll update the description too. A program that loads and parses some CSV data. It turns out we don't actually need any libraries in order to load the data. I'm going to create a new script tag so we can start writing some JavaScript. In here, I'm going to use a function that's built in to the browser called fetch. Fetch takes as input a URL. URL, by the way, stands for Uniform Resource Locator, and it's the thing that appears in your address bar in a browser. For our data set, we don't want this URL because it returns an HTML page. Instead, we want the raw URL that just returns the content of the CSV file. With GitHub Gist in particular, it adds this part to the URL, which is a specific version, and we don't actually need that. So I'm going to get rid of it, and this is the URL that we want. To load this data with our code, I'm going to copy this URL here and paste it into our code. I'll say const URL equals a string, and then I'll paste that URL there. Now when our code runs, it fetches that URL. It dispatches a network request for the resource at this URL. But what does fetch return? Let's take a look. We could say console.log, whatever is returned from fetch. And then if we open the console, we can see that it returns a promise. In JavaScript, promises are its a construct for dealing with asynchronous control flow. Our invocation of fetch, for example, it kicks off an asynchronous process. Synchronous means it happens right away. But asynchronous means it doesn't happen right away. It takes some time. Here's a rough metaphor. You go to the mall, you get some shoes. That's roughly synchronous because you physically go into the mall, you go into the shop, you try on some shoes, you purchase the shoes, and you leave. It's one flow of control as opposed to ordering shoes online. That's more of an asynchronous thing. When you order it online, you put in the request, and then you wait for some time before your shoes are delivered. That's roughly asynchronous. Our invocation of fetch here is more like ordering shoes online than getting shoes at the mall. That's why fetch returns a promise. A promise is a thing that is in a certain state. Either it's pending or it's resolved. And when it's resolved, it either succeeds or fails. What we want to do is tap into that case where the promise succeeds, where the CSV data comes back to us. And here's how we do that. Now that we know this returns a promise, I'm going to make a new variable called promise for that. And I'll say const promise equals fetch URL. And instead of console.logging the promise, we want to console.log the response that comes back from the promise. And how do we get that response? We need to call promise.then and pass in a function that takes as input the response. So let's define a function, takes as input response, and in the body of this function, that's where we need to put console.log response. This is what's called a callback function because it will be called back when something is ready. It's like they say in Hollywood, don't call me, I'll call you. Let's see what we've got in the console. We've got a response object. Now that we've got this response, we need to somehow get at the text of this response. And I think that's 
in the body, but the body is a readable stream. See, when you make a network request and something comes back, it doesn't all come at once. It comes back in a stream, like a stream of water. It's not like somebody handing you an ice cube. It's more like somebody filling up your cup. Imagine a cup being filled up with RCSV text. We need to wait until it's filled in order to use it. So we need to wait until this readable stream finishes. How do we do that? This is where I like to turn to the documentation. The Fetch API is extremely well documented in MDN, Mozilla Developers Network. And it says right here, Fetch provides a generic definition of request and response objects. And what we're dealing with there is a response object. So I'm going to click through this link. This page tells you all about the response object. The most common ways of getting at the full content of a response is to use .json or .text. .text is what we want here. It takes a response stream and reads it to completion, and then returns a promise that resolves to the text itself. Calling response.json is similar to .text, but it also parses the text as JSON and returns an object. Let's try using .text. What if we console.log response dot text. That also returns a promise. So we need to also say dot then over here. And I'll take this out of console.log. And let's define our second level callback function that takes as input text. And in the body of this function, that's where we can console.log our text. All right, now we've got our CSV text. This can be simplified a little bit by getting rid of this variable here called promise. I can just say fetch URL dot then, and this still works. All right, that's how you can load some CSV data. But it's not quite ideal because we're encountering what's called the pyramid of doom with these dot then callbacks. For every asynchronous task that we need to wait for, we need to do one level of indentation in our code here to wait for that level to complete. This phenomenon is typically called the pyramid of doom or pyramid of death. We can avoid this entirely by using a language feature that was introduced in ES6, namely async and await. I'm going to keep a copy of this code around, comment it out here just for future reference. And I'm going to change around this version to use async and await. The way this works is that we should be able to say const response equals await fetch URL. However, await is only valid inside an async function. So let's make an async function. I'll say const fetch text equals a function. And in this function is where we can put this code. To make this regular old function into an async function, an asynchronous function, all we need to do is add the async keyword right here. This function doesn't actually run right now, but we can make it run by invoking it like this. Every async function returns a promise, by the way. So fetch text will be returning a promise. We can give the same refactoring treatment to this line here. We can say const text equals await response.text. And then we can console.log text in here and get rid of this code down there. All right, this works. We can make one little improvement here, uh, encapsulating this as an actual function that we can use. Right now, it's accessing this variable out here, but we can make that an argument to the function. And it's also logging the text, but really what we can do is just return the text. Now, fetch text doesn't need to know about that URL definition, so I can move it elsewhere. And just to differentiate it, I'm going to call it something else like CSV URL. Now we can pass CSV URL into here, and it returns a promise 
So we can say promise.then, pass a callback function that accepts the text, and in that callback function is where we can console.log our text. And this still works. Great. That's how you can use async and await to escape the Pyramid of Doom. That's all for loading data with fetch.